Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. And thank you so much for joining us for the release of Shrines. Uh, it, I'm so happy to be here with our author tonight, uh, Saira Jane. This is going to be a beautiful, beautiful reading uh, from a wonderful and powerful little book uh, of Shrines and other wonderful things. So much love, tenderness, uh, maybe a little sexuality. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> it might get a little spicy this evening. So really, you're in for a treat. Uh, and it's it's been such an honor to help put this book out into the world. Um, so I don't want to tie us up too much. I really want to get right into it and just let Sagri uh, do their thing because I think that's what you're here for, right? Uh, so let me introduce our feature for this evening. Uh, Sagri Jane Bay Them is a poet, writer, artist, and queer from Silicon Valley. Their writing has been featured in Audio Straddle, The Margins, Them, Magazine, and The Offing, where they're also an assistant editor. Their collaborative poetry collection with R.T. Warrior, Longing, and Other Heirlooms was published with Egg Tooth Editions in April 2022. Uh, they are class and cast privilege and tweet at, at Sagri J. Now, let me bring up feature here. And I'm going to get out of the way. So Sagri, please take it from here. Amazing. Hi, y'all. Um... I'm Sagri. I am so excited, honored, blessed to be here. Um, I'm holding in my hands the first copy I ever got of this precious book and project. And, um, you know, evidence of all the time that people put into reading my work, um, blurbing my work, editing, um, fiddling around uh, with margins and punctuation. Um, I'm gonna start by reading the dedication. Um, it's here. It reads, to my mother for teaching me so many words. Um, and as my mother is here, uh, probably, terrified of how sexual this content is about to be. Um, I just wanted to, to thank her. Um, with that, this is called In Which the Poet Admits That They Are Powerless. When I bought us cuffs made of pleather and Velcro, my baby already had chains under her bed. She uses them, me sometimes. She labors to draw them up through the clinking of cold steel Strap them taut to my asking skin. That is what I am, asking. Asking to give, to want, to be masked, to be had, to be silent, to be loud, to be yours, to be a vessel, to be a stray fantasy, to be the drip down my own throat. To be hurt, to be shared, to be, to be. Asking not for guardrails, but for a long, steep drop asking again and again to come closer to myself, asking for nothing more or less than a moment of bliss, hands clenched, eyes open, couldn't touch myself even if I wanted to. That is how the book opens. And I, I know we're gonna get into it later, talking about um, writing sex and sexuality. Um, I'm so excited for that. Um, I'm going to read next the first poem I ever wrote for this collection. And for what it's worth, I wrote this poem about eight, maybe nine years ago. So this has been a long time in the making. Um, this is called Rhythm. I asked him, what can you read in the curve of me? Do I swell in an alphabet shape? V, tapering, a sultry point, R, twisting languidly, O, seamless, whole. He asked, is this where you want to be? I lied. I am made of fish glittering together, overwhelmed by orange dark. Wild things and sad things live together, packed in cans of peaches. He said not to worry. He does not get attached. And my mouth filled with lustrous stones. My feet dripped as I slipped on them, split my kneecaps, sewed me shut, organs bright and sputtering, 
deer and headlights dissected on the operating table. I was oil slicked in brighter worlds. I was virulently bright and stiffeningly sad. I slipped in my fingers. I ground into my skin. He said, oh fuck, like that. And I would say, thank y'all. <laughs> I would say this is the poem that really addresses most in the book, the kind of more grim elements of sexuality and the way that, especially before I was having um, primarily queer and trans sex, um, it felt like a performance. Um, I'd love to juxtapose that to, well, um, the way that, you know, some of the other poems in this collection um, are more joyful, are more present, are less uh, frozen. And with that, I'd love to read a couple poems that are just about queer and transness. Um, this is a poem I wrote thinking about, you know, as a Bay Area baby and um, someone who's led, uh, in many ways, a very blessed life. There are a lot of moments where I come into contact with you know, virulent or obvious homophobia and transphobia, and it shocks me. And I feel naive in those moments. I feel, um, I feel silly. Um, but there's also something really educational and important about the ways that we come into community and they teach us about ourselves. And I, I think that's something that runs through this collection too, is how other people teach us about ourselves. Um, this is called The Things I Did That Were, in retrospect, very bold. And as a longtime resident of sunny Berkeley, maybe I am naive in these moments of audacity. I remember them all. Short-haired and pixie-collared in a club in Kampala, flashing my eyes at a woman and you wouldn't believe the look I got back. Pink haired and gold framed in a gun range in Austin, fingers trembling from the small fires, tongue tripping gaily through my languages, weaving through our queer and sweating bodies, always acting in self-defense. Bold of me to speak so loudly among the armed and white men of Texas, or to one time clasp my hand in my partner's hand, look across a table laden with biryani, and prepare to announce that we touched each other like teenage girls in the dark. No, I did not tell the sweet Punjabi cook that I burned with a sodomite's fire for my white girlfriend. I don't know how I arrived at this desperate place, this plea, plaintive, mewling, this unbridled desire to be held. How dare I learn that what I am is pure? How dare I share that love is love is a barrel of eels is slippery even for me? Me, most dexterous, most naive, in some of those moments, even unscarred, as we all were once, however briefly. I saw my own human heart pulsing with connections, and I said, look upon these organs and recover. Rejoice in the baritone of my singing voice, in the shapes my body makes in the dark. In all these moments, my beloveds burst my bubbles, popped my cherries, took me innocent, and showed me how to move in the waves, in earnest, in the rush of a stream suffused by rain. And after all that, after all that, after all that, all I have ever known is still thimbles in the writhing ocean. Ooh, that's a long one. Um, I love reading that one out with the energy at the end. Um, I also loved writing the scene where, um, you know, I went to Texas about a year ago and being something of a sucker for a good story, uh, I let my friend take me to a gun range and about 20 minutes in after I'd shot a couple times, found out I really hated it and like put the gun away. I realized that everyone in the 
little gun range was like white and straight and looking at us weird right like this like two like south like south asian non-binary person the big bisexual black man and it just <laughs> it was a <the> whole thing <laughs> um this is another poem about queerness um it's after the incredible poet Fatima Azgar and um I shared this poem this Saturday at a celebration a little picnic celebrating um the birthday of Lou Sullivan who's a really famous um and influential trans and gay man um so I I I really value and love those moments where I'm able to speak this directly to my community and really share with queer and trans folks who are looking for affirmation and to feel loved. And I hope when you hear this poem, if that is you, you feel affirmed and loved because that's what it's for. My people, my people. My people shout their names on the streets when they can. My people yell dyke and faggot, twisting their tongues around the words they use to kill us. My people lace their blood with gold, gilt their skulls in silver. What is a queer if not a tongue wrapped around the violence they gave us, knives in our mouths? What else would you say to a stranger or your nani or the woman who broke your heart except, thank you for digging inside me and seeing treasure, the jewelry with which I dress my wounds. My people, my people, my infinite grief, my skin drummed green with all your names. I'd gather you sweating into my arms. I'd make you warm beds and hot cocoa. I'd draw blood for every single one of you. The girl lesbians and the boy lesbians and all the sissies I ever loved. At the march, at the clinic, on the pulsing dance floor, I grieve for my brothers and sisters and others. No, some of us still live. No, others live and die lonely. Let loneliness be our lover. Let words flower and crumble inside of us. And me, my beauty, my handsome short king. I named my people once, shortly then before the knife became my bloodied hands. I named us glorious and rageful and maimed, named us soft and sweet and violent. My people, my people, my treasure, my grief, my reason and rhyme and breath. I survey the friends that became my armory and I know I do it all again. Do you hear me? I do it all over again. I'd love to switch gears a little bit and talk a little bit about I come from Indian people. I grew up around Indian people before I knew I was queer or non-binary or an angry little child of immigrants. I knew I was Indian. Um, and there's so much that I feel I so much energy and melodrama and Bollywood that I think shows up in my, in my writing. Um, and I'd love to kind of um, read a little bit about what it is to be from elsewhere. Um, even for those of us who um, were born here. Um, this is a little poem that is the first poem I ever wrote that rhymes. Um, I admit that I once read this to my mother and she had no recollection of the memory I was talking about, but I remember it, so it's real, I think. Um, I fiddled with this poem for years, <laughs> so I hope you like its final form. It's called Raul Pindi. I live 10 years in Texas sun, singeing my brown body. Today's paper, leaking red, time traveling tapestry. 
Ravel Bindi, says my mother, and she drips into her sink. I churn to know from where she hears these brown bodies sing. It whistles through me when she mourns, a piercing reverie, a nurse, a scythe, sheathed undigested, shadow memory. For 10 more years, I trace moist steel, read my tattered flesh, hope it will sing me symphonies my mother danced to then. Um, I'm going to keep going with some little immigrant poems. Um, this next one is um, features my dad. Um, a few years ago, I made the rather wild choice of moving to Uganda, where I had never been. And um, it was such a enriching experience in terms of thinking about what it is to be South Asian globally, what it is to live elsewhere, to keep moving, to be unattached and untethered, um, to be something wholly new as you only can be in a new place. Um, and I thought a lot about being from immigrants. Um, but one of the funny things they do in Uganda is they call the white people and pale people who show up there, um, expats, expatriates. And I've never really been able to figure out the difference between expatriate and immigrants other than money and whiteness. Um, so when my dad um, said, oh, you're gonna be an expat, I reacted a little strongly and I wrote this poem. It's called, My Skin Has Never Sung Expatriate. It was my father who first asked, adjusting a globe atop his head, so you'll be an expat? I took the shot, the shot was true. I landed elsewhere, remained in transit, heading for warmer climes. But aren't I already climatologically determined? No, I said, no, I said, no, I said. These are the shapes you gave me. This is the rupture I repaired. Look at me wearing others' pajamas. Onward is what I am, father, sneaking and battled into various spotlights, laying my frame to chopping blocks, laying myself to altars. Both and, I can't always tell if I am my people's people, if I can echolocate across front lines. Both and, I can't always cant with my cruel people, my most timid of bats, most varied of species. I couldn't find you a chili pepper in double helixes, could only hear unheard echo across these stalactites. And yet, here I am, a warm parata, a heavily lacquered night sky, a beautiful darkish pleasure. I unbutton my button down and I sing to me, sing longing, sing ghost story, sing burning brass adorned brown, outshine me, my own transcendence. Aren't you enthralled by the song of traveling on? I flap towards me in the dark. Immigrant, my skin sings, sweet as the sea. Immigrant, immigrant, immigrant. Okay, I have one more poem that's explicitly about brown people. And then I'm going to read a couple love poems, maybe even a breakup poem to um, close us out. This next one is um, one of the many poems in the collection that pulls names into it. Um, it's very specifically and intentionally written for my little crew in high school. You know, high school is unbearable. And um, we formed a really tight little circle, partially because we loved each other, the six of us, and partially because we were all very mentally ill. And that to me is such a, 
it's almost like spoken but unspoken part of the Asian American experience is being mentally ill. Um, and I wrote this as a kind of, you know, it's the title doesn't say shrine, but I think all these poems are shrines and it's a shrine to them, all my friends who um, needed us, needed each other. It's called In Which All My Friends Want To. And um, there are a lot of pauses in this poem. I look forward to talking more about that. <laughs> Maybe it started when Anjali tried to, maybe before. I followed her ledger forearms, her shrouded sweatshirt, was captivated as she recorded her father's. Maybe it was when we wrote Adi an elegy, somberly set, his fingers alight. Halfless woods, lidless buckets, a pyre for the genially flicking. You need two forks to run a current from toe to shining toe. So sweet of Athreya, sharing his spliff. So kind of Boshna, offering us his flashbacks. And I never knew, danced herself to. In her mirror flashing costume, eyelid flashing face. But I knew, knew breath through panic, knew when to call it in. Call your Indian parents, collect the transformations of your father's mustached face, learn together that Americans dream of. I knew, but we knew. Little hurricanes of misplaced sand, little family on plastic cell phones, little immigrant kids holding hands, gripping our helium light bodies to asphalt, every funeral a trans Pacific trip. Every song, a frontier song. Now it's all then that we dreamed of the exhaustion of veil rolling over us, a second sparkling night, a tired river of exhaust in the forbidden dark. I count our quiet subterfuges, our interchanging homes, our parents' wooden doors flickering into each other. I remember in nooks and palms and warm cups of tea, the times I wanted to holding my friends in my calloused hands. We never wanted to live for that long. We did anyway. Thank y'all for giving me the space for sounding off in the chat. Um, I would love to read some poems about romantic love uh, before we turn it over for questions and to hang out with the inimitable MJ. Um, this is called Shrine to Doing My Love's Makeup. Um, and it's about falling in love with someone who maybe before either of y'all realized it has a very similar gender to you. Um, so in it, like in many of my poems, I imagine another world, one that is kinder and sweeter and gentler to queer and trans people. Shrine to doing my love's makeup. Me, barely tethered to this world by bare knees, cold marble, sprinkling gold along silver eyelids, brushing black paint through eyelashes, delighted by its weight. Them, velvet stubbled skin as canvas, eyes as illustration and eyes as aesthetic. Them, starting as a sketch and shivering into the other world, where we grew together, trading color and solace and cups of chirping crickets, lay side by side with clumsy bodies and found their differences trivial, where soft and undecided, they came to their mother with a red and golden tool, and she was overwhelmed by the offering. Knelt, kissed the forehead made in her image, uncapped the lipstick and prayed as she painted. Of course, my love, my shimmer of light, 
I always knew you were a work of art. Um, this next poem I wrote when I was living in Delhi and I was messing with this gay boy who I swear to God told me, I thought I was gay, but then I met you. I've never heard anything so validating to my gender and identity in my life. Um, and this is about kissing them at a drag show in a gay bar in Delhi and remembering all over again that gender is fake. Um, it's also about the ephemeral way that love finds us and leaves us um, and finding beauty in the impermanent. It's called, I Thought That I Was Dreaming. Oh, the sweet void of your open mouth, the dancing girls of your closed eyes. I didn't think you could spark fire until you did. Didn't think you could wave water until you did. Didn't know you wanted me until you kissed me. You jangling rings and sleeveless shirt, cheekbones to cut my doubt clean away. And me, tinder waiting to be divine, water overflowing sheepishly, tangling with desire in Frank Ocean's words. I wanted you, baby, your hand on my chest, at my back, around my throat. I wanted you to kiss me softly and then make a trapeze of my body, make a portal of my mouth. Wanted you sweet and savory and every flavor besides. How many times will I write queer with my hair before becoming accustomed to surprise? How long to wait until we learn this lake of desire? Row my way to the horizon and then to home. My darling, my sweetheart, my marble-faced twink robed in want. Think of me sometime. And I will share one more. Um, on the topic of love. Um, this is a breakup poem. It's also, uh, you know, all times of loss are also times of growth. Um, this is to the time that I broke up with my girlfriend and went to India for three months and I found something new and beautiful in my nanny's dinner table. It's called In Which the Poet Heals. I held my nanny's wrinkled hand as she said, lovers always love you, husbands rarely do. I laid out my finest finery to witness the arrangement of my uncle, cried quietly by the mandap. I slept near my mother, listened to her snore. I took no new lovers, except for the new lovers I took. I did nothing of import, except continue to breathe through the salt. I ate nothing that satisfied me, except sarsokasag, fresh from my nani's garden. And I had no revelations, save for at my nani's dinner table, mouthful of mutter and all my loss. And my mother laughs and I know, onward I go. Oh yeah. my God, people, <laughs> are, are we in the chat right now? Because that was an amazing reading. I know I say this every time, but I might be biased, but that was a wonderful reading. That was just absolutely incredible. I'd like to echo something that uh, Kaylee said in the chat here too, really quick. Just beautiful poems. Love those titles. Also perfect. I uh, couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, truly just awesome. And I hope everyone in the room tonight really appreciated that. I mean, you gave us a feast. You gave us romance, heartbreak, sex, familial love, wisdom, tenderness, like uh, just a, a buffet. And I don't know how we could ask for more, or we're going to, because we're going to have a conversation and we're going to have a Q&A. So with that being said, uh, I do have some questions that I've written up to ask you tonight. Uh, but if anyone out in the uh, chat in the room tonight has any questions for our author here, uh, please put them in the chat. Be happy to ask them. Um, so with that, I want to start, could you do me a favor? Could you bring up that wonderful, beautiful, amazing? Of course. Here it is. Yes. Uh, 
Ah, look at that. Oh my God. So this cover is a really amazing cross collaboration. It's a mixed media that we have going on here, right? We've got photography, the cover design, your own painting that we've incorporated in here, yourself, right? Serving, amazing. So I want to know a little bit um, about the vision of this cover and the painting that you incorporated and why you chose this uh, and a little bit of how it connects to the actual themes of your collection. Totally. Um, I think to start, I made this painting um, when I was living in Bushwick. And despite living in Bushwick, I had this like big, beautiful wall um, in my room where I could hang up loose canvas and just like go to town. The first time I tried it, I painted right through the canvas. I painted my wall. The landlord was unhappy. Okay. The second time I tried it, I like put garbage bags behind the canvas. Um, but I think I've always been a little obsessed with iterations of my own body, um, how it grows and takes um, new shapes and, you know, holds both like scars and wounds. <laughs> And joy. Um, and I think, you know, for one, I was not prepared to paint my face. Um, it's very hard. For another, I was really interested in kind of the obscuring of fire. And I've been thinking about fire, um, you know, it being I was I was raised in the in a kind of Hindu tradition. And while I don't necessarily identify with Hinduism very strongly anymore, one thing I do love about it is the way that fire binds things together in at an altar, at a wedding. Um, it's 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 alchemical or alchemical. It it creates new things and it um, transforms us. So um, when uh, Game Over Books so sweetly and generously offered to publish this this book I already had a little bit of a of a vision for a way to um include this painting but also like show a little bit of um you know, um, I, I love putting my face on things and it wasn't in the painting. So it was for sure going to be on the book cover. <laughs> Luckily, I have photographer okay. friends and uh, Simra Farouk, who does really gorgeous uh, work with, um, you know, South Asian and Muslim themes, um, took the picture. And then my homie Tanea, uh, who's a brilliant designer, you know, put some words on it. And I think it came out, you know, um, oh, I think it it's out. got fire. It's got a little sex. It's got um, my pink hair, which is no longer pink. Um, so I was grateful that y'all were so flexible with letting me bring my vision um, into reality in so many so ways. So more than happy to. It's, it's been a wonderful journey. Um, so actually, kind of going off of that little bit with your hair, I want to talk about uh, impermanence, right? So there's a lot of that in, in the book here. Um, but in particular, I'm curious, uh, I think your mom's here tonight, right? She is. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, how has the tenderness that you have inherited from, you know, your mother, your family helped you to navigate the, some of the impermanence that you talk about in life and in relationships this whole yeah. time. Yeah, and I'll, I'll start by saying that my Venus is in Gemini. So my life is a hot, sexy mess all the time. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, I think one of the things that I inherited really strongly from my mother is generosity. And in I think to me the practice of art making is one of vulnerability of openness of being honest and upfront with the people you love about how much they move you how much they change you um I can't always say that I have 
you know, um, been very successful in love, which is good for my writing, you know, like what y'all call dating, I call doing research for some poems. Um, but, <laughs> for sure, yeah. <laughs> um, but I do think that I am generous with my friends and with my work and it's possible because my mother and my grandmother, um, are generous with me. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a wonderful answer. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Um, uh, and, uh, shout out to Sagari's mom, thank you for being here. Hope you're having a wonderful night. Uh, your kid's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so uh, with that, I'm also sure that your uh, mother was super stoked about all the sex poems tonight. And so with that, I would love to talk a little bit about, uh, you, you do it so gracefully, you know, and, and uh, so beautifully, uh, I think, and especially in this book. So I'm curious if you have any tips for writers that are looking to explore that more openly, looking to explore or write about sexuality, sex in their own work, but aren't sure how to find that voice yet. Cause it's not, it's not easy to navigate that. And especially when you're coming into your own queerness. So I'm wondering what yeah. tips or advice you might have. Folks yeah and I think it's always a balance um you know um writing the erotic is very different from writing erotica and personally mm -hmm. I'm in full support of both um but there's something about sex that to me is very bare not to not to pun but there's like You know, I'm a little obsessed with the process of like getting to know someone and figuring out what they like, you know, how they're going to show up um, in a sexual context, like how they appreciate force or tenderness or, you know, play. Um, and I think sex shows us so much about ourselves and each other and if I were giving advice to me eight or nine years ago when I first started kind of writing poems with erotic and, and um, you know, PG-13 content, mm -hmm. it would often be to like focus on what else is happening. Like there's there's bodies moving and that's interesting, but where where's the power at? Where's the tenderness at um what's kind of moving through you in ways that are expressed by sex but in some ways not even about sex um yeah that's what I got thank you I think that's perfect um so throughout the collection there you have a series of poems that you indicate as you know specifically shrines like shrine to your bible heart and so on um these are like specific memories aspects of yourself experiences that you choose to honor and so i'm interested uh why did you choose the particular things that you did for those poems right like how did you uh hone in on those specific aspects um and then in terms of ordering how did you determine where they should show up like chronologically right for the arc of your narrative mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'll start with the last part, which is that in this book, I feel what I set out to do when I was putting together the manuscript was I sensed a lot of poetry that was about love and loss and coming of age. And I also sensed this trajectory where the speaker kind of wanders off into a like glowing, glorious other world um totally untethered from reality and i i still kind of go back and forth with myself about how real or realistic that ending is given that you know um i'm still here i'm still changing and struggling and um finding freedom in different ways but the ways that these shrines were attempts to honor things um my own growth, my homies, my lovers, my bipolar heart, as you said, kind of 
fell into place um, around that journey. Um, I do think that the book is one that is interested in youth and and shedding youth or um, valuing youth um, and kind of like coming out of that. Um, so, you know, queer and trans people of color so rarely get little coming of age stories, but here's one. And, um, you know, it's about fire. Yeah. It's about desire. It's about finding yourself in others movement and energy and spirit. Um, so, you know, um, when I went back to it, a lot of my poems were shrines were glowing already. Absolutely. Um, and so with that, uh, I'm curious, and this is something that I actually ask uh, pretty much all the authors, because once, you know, your book starts to go out into the world, it gets into people's hands and folks start to take it in for themselves, they read things any kind of way that they would like, right? So I am curious, uh, what do you hope that readers take away from this book, this collection, in regards to uh, self-exploration, queerness and sexuality, uh, the willingness to be tender, uh, impermanence, all these different topics and themes that we're talking about, youth, like what, what do you truly hope that people can take away from this collection of poetry? Yeah, I mean, I... Firstly, I think you did a great job summarizing it. So I don't know how much more I have to add. Like those, you know, thank you for reading with such uh, precision. Um, I think what I hope from poetry in general and my poetry in specific is that it gives people permission um, to live in ways that they have always desired to. Um, and I think poetry is so powerful for connecting us to our own deeply held needs and desires and intensities. Um, and in this collection, um, you know, I have, I have other work that is concerned with sexual shame or, um, you know, uh, this is this is kind of a a book of happier shit than than I think the norm and I think I want people to read these and feel joy and feel connected to themselves and if that was true that would um make my day uh, it's it's definitely making our day that's for sure <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and I love how you said that and talked about uh, the permission in particular. Um, I think if you were to ask me if there was any commonality or like thematic throughout books that we have published as Game Over Books, it is that. And it's allowing yourself the permission to just be who you are fully and beautifully. And I love it. I'm here for it. Uh, and I have one more question. Uh, but I do want to, before I ask this, anyone in the, the chat, uh, if you have anything you'd like to ask, Please throw it out or forever hold your peace. All right. Because uh, I only have one more here. Uh, and with that, um, so in the poem, My People, My People, uh, you have this line. You you, you uh, go off and say, jewelry with which I address my wounds. And I'm curious, uh, what would you say is the most precious jewel or aspect of yourself that has been brought to light from a lover past relationship? And how did you come to cherish that more now for yourself as you move forward? This is such an interesting question. And I I will say, I like that you brought out that line because I think there's something very, um, there's something very gay about taking suffering and making it sparkle. Um, and I think that's, also in some ways my answer um it's not simple or easy being um queer non-binary uh south asian bipolar um but every every piece of me that i was given is a teacher 
Um, my mother likes to say, you think of everything as a teacher. Um, and the way that I have, you know, it's, it's about creativity for me. You learn about yourself, you process through the work of creating art. Um, you find that you are so much more practiced both in the craft and in the work of navigating this, you know, frankly, hellish world every year and every time you go back to yourself. Um, so I have found that I am, I am scrappy and I am a survivor. And um, I think a lot of these poems are, are testament to that and testament to um, the beauty of my people continuing to survive. A very bold and beautiful testament, right? Absolutely. Uh, well, that is my last question. I don't know if anyone has anything they would like to ask. I'm gonna... Anything, anything at all. Don't be shy. It's okay. All right, fair enough. That's cool. Uh, well, with that, thank you so much, Sagri. Uh, it's been such a wonderful time uh, with you this evening. Thank you so much for everyone for joining us. Uh, you could be doing anything, be anywhere in the world, but you're here listening to a little uh, poetry on Zoom, and, and we appreciate that. Uh, Shrines is available now. You can get it at gameoverbooks.com, uh, soon to be your local bookstores as well. So please go get your copy if you haven't already. Uh, you, come on. I don't know why you haven't ordered it already. <laughs> did, you, did you hear these poems? Uh, but anyway, that's our show, folks. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope you have a great rest of your night.